Hello, everybody. This is Off Leash with Eric Prince. I'm Mark Serrano. Time for an update on Venezuela and the fight for freedom against Maduro. First, this, a story that just hit titled, Maduro is weaker and weaker. That's a quote from Maria Karina Machado. In this story, the opposition leader, uh, who was supposed to run as the opposition's candidate for president on the July 28th election, before she was barred doing so, had this to say, I think that everybody knows that Edmundo Gonzalez won. Everybody knows inside and outside Venezuela that it was by a landslide and that he is the president-elect. Every day that goes by, Nicolas Maduro is more and more isolated. He's not only a dictator that pretends to rob an election, but he's a criminal. Eric, you have been heavily involved in the fight for freedom in Venezuela. Give me a reaction to uh, these quotes in this uh, article and this interview from Maria Karina Machado. Look, she's a, she is a brave woman. Um, she is the one that really won the primary and, and earned the right to, uh, to run against Nicolas Maduro. But <clears throat> Maduro, with his actually Democrat policy-like um, pursuits, barred her from running uh, and criminalized her campaign with, without any valid reason. But this guy, Edmundo Gonzalez, who is basically the surrogate for Maria Carina, he actually won the election by 70% to 30%. So more than two to one voted for the opposition. But again, Maduro, like a typical criminal gang boss, um, refuses to leave, backed up by the Cubans and the Iranians and the Russians. And the State Department isn't really doing anything much about it. They have not put sanctions back on the U.S. oil companies, or not... They have not even revoked the licenses to operate there from the U.S. companies that um, were granted it, Chevron and Sargent Oil. So they are enriching themselves at the expense of any kind of representative democracy for Venezuela. Uh, And they have hired big dollar lobbyists and lawyers in Washington to sprinkle more money around the White House and the Democrats uh, in Congress to keep the money flowing. Uh, for this uh, this narco regime, Nicholas, Nicholas Maduro, there is a warrant out for his arrest with a bounty of fifteen million dollars. His interior minister, Diosdado Cabello, has a bounty of ten million dollars. And again, as I've talked about previously, we I suggested raising those bounties. Uh, Senator Rick Scott from Florida took that to heart and actually introduced legislation uh, last week in the Senate to actually do that. So thank you, thank you, Senator Scott, for doing so. I hope Congress moves on it because this would be a, a magnificently simple way for the U.S. to put pressure, use monetary incentives to get some of those senior military officers to flip because I, the math also extends 70-30 in favor of getting rid of Maduro. I'd say that math also applies to the abundance of senior military officers that don't want the corruption and the nonsense and they really the destruction of their society. So, again, this is um, as a result of me uh, trolling um, Maduro and his cartel. There's a, thousands of people that reached out and asked for um, a place to send money, and so we've done that. Uh, there's a a nonprofit called Yakazi Venezuela, um, and it's raised uh, significant funds already uh, and continues to do so despite all the nonsense uh, thrown at it, the denial of service attacks by the regime, um, calling banks, claiming it's a fraud. They're, they're pulling all the dirty tricks, but that's okay. There's a very persistent, capable group that's running that program, and, um, and we'll see it through. And then the mission is to dial up pressure in all ways, diplomatic, public relations, the business community, et cetera, to pressurize and to drive out and to effectively affect the warrant for the arrest of Nicolas Maduro and a whole bunch of his criminal co-conspirators for rampant drug trafficking, money laundering, and other criminal activity. Yeah, look, a pressure campaign, indeed, uh, Eric, is is what is needed here. But this is here, here's a contrast I want to play for you, which is, you know, when you don't have the U.S. government applying dramatic pressure because they, they just have these weak need statements from the State Department, and it's nothing. There's not a pressure campaign 
coming out of the U.S. government. And yet, here's Machado, another quote from her, saying, Maduro won't go until the cost of staying in power is higher than the cost of leaving power. In the end, I believe Maduro will understand that his best option is to sit down and negotiate an orderly and peaceful transition in Venezuela. Now, I believe we need a hell of a lot more pressure from the U.S. government to make that happen. But how realistic is she at this stage of the game? She is right that uh, there is real fear amongst elements of the regime. She is right that he needs to see either a path of exit and take his illegal money and leave, or does he wind up like Manuel Noriega, wrapped up in prison for the rest of his life in a supermax in the middle of America. Remember, 1989, Manuel Noriega had actually been friendly to some American interests, but he ended up running a big narco empire and a major trafficker. And he actually started abusing some American citizens that were there. And Bush, in the December of 1989, said enough of that. And 27,000 troops invaded Panama, deposed Noriega, and put him in prison. And so, again, the Maduro clan has some choices to make. They can leave. I'm sure they can negotiate an exit where the U.S. would let them leave. Uh, and turn the turn the the government over to the legitimate elector uh, winners of that election, or they're going to wind up in prison or much worse. Yeah, but it sounds great, sounds great. But we need active engagement and a serious pressure campaign from from the Biden administration. I don't think we're going to see that happen. Uh, so do you think after November 5th with a Trump victory, the pressure will grow much greater, much faster on Maduro at that point? I think the, um, the Chevron people are cynically spreading a lot of money around Washington to the lawyers and lobbyists to spend on politicians to not have real pressure put on the regime. And if you think about the lawfare that was waged against Trump these last year with a bunch of nonsense civil suits, criminal charges, trying to disqualify him from being on the ballots in a lot of these states. All this lawfare is exactly what Maduro was doing to Maria Carina Machado. Again, the same way they would, uh, the tax police would come to a hotel or a restaurant that she stayed at and close them down the next day to make it impossible for her to move in that society, let alone campaign. Yeah, well, look, there, speaking of uh, the oil companies, uh, there, there's uh, this headline from Fox News I wanted to touch on, too. Biden urged to crack down on oil companies doing business with Venezuela after Maduro's refusal to cede power. OK, so Biden's urged to do it, but he's not doing it. He's just letting the oil flow to these to these companies, like you said, including Chevron. Isn't that a huge part yeah. of the problem here. I mean, don't we need to change that dynamic in, in order to get Maduro out of there? 200, I think Chevron's uh, field is now producing about 200,000 barrels a day or will be soon by the end of the year. I think Chevron has to consider, uh, their board is quite split. Um, some are in favor of continuing on with supporting a criminal regime. Some of them have uh, uh, supported cutting away. I think Chevron has to realize that when Maduro goes and there's a new uh, elected government in charge, they should be they would be at severe risk of losing that entire concession and all their investment, uh, and they should. They have to have consequences for choosing the evil side on this one. Look, to support my point, I just want to touch on this quote here too, Eric, from uh, the uh, uh, Heritage's uh, Center for National Security, uh, the Heritage Foundation, quote, they could see if they could have some conversations with them about what a transition would look like. But rather than doing any of that, they're just letting the oil flow. Speaking of the Biden administration, the administration is, on the one hand, doing some actions that would make it appear that it is heightening enforcement against the Maduro regime. But it's clearing ho clearly holding off on really restating and fully pressuring the Venezuela government with sanctions and economic restrictions particularly when it comes to the oil sector. That's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's it's a huge part of their lifeblood. And uh, it's now even facilitated by some very Democrat, donor-friendly uh, American companies, Chevron and Sargent Oil. 
it's a bad, bad, bad look for both of them. Yeah, it's well, and and the truth is, we have a caretaker president. Uh, you know, as we saw in this first cabinet meeting in the White House in one year, Joe Biden opens up the meeting, and who does he turn to to run the meeting? The first lady of the United States, Jill Biden. She ran the cabinet meeting. So we've got this caretaker president, this uh, lame duck who's not even really fulfilling the role in any way whatsoever. We have his sidekick, who's the nominee for the Democrats, who's responsible as equally as responsible for all their policies. And so I would hope, I would hope that Latin American voters take a look at this administration and Kamala Harris being on the side of a dictator to motivate them to get out to vote in November. It's um, it would be like a family of chickens voting to go to Chick Fil A if if any uh, Latin bear, Latin voter votes for the Democrats because they're voting for socialism and ultimately the destruction of their societies. Well, I'll tell you what we see this incredible. We've talked about this before. This incredible contrast from uh, this repressive regime in uh, Venezuela, this cling to power versus uh, the the picture of freedom in Argentina. In El Salvador, you know, I think uh, good days lie ahead uh, in South America. But boy, what it's going to take is for all voters, but especially Latin American voters who understand the uh, the toxic effects of socialism uh, and a dictatorial regime like this, and get out and vote. Because if if God forbid we have a Kamala Harris presidency. The oil will continue to flow uh, to these oil companies uh, from Venezuela, and I do not see them applying a pressure campaign. Only Donald Trump can bring, uh, I think, the kind of pressure campaign it will take to deliver freedom to the people of Venezuela. Elections have consequences, and, and that's the important. That's why so many people pay attention to America, because our elections affect their lives and livelihoods in their own countries because of um, the, the, the global reach of America and its economy and, uh, and sometimes its military. Yeah, well, it's also why people watch uh, Off Leash uh, to get your insights and your expert views. Uh, and, you know, folks, let me just tell you, uh, the people of Venezuela have got a friend in Eric Prince because he's been uh, a, a, one of the most outspoken champions for their freedom, especially since the July 28th election. Uh, And good on you, uh, Eric. Keep up the good fight. This is for the Venezuelan people to solve. I'm just here to to give a nudge now and then. Yep. Okay. Well said. Well said. Look, that's it for us. Don't forget to uh, go to unplugged.com slash off leash to get your unplugged phone today from our great sponsor. Uh, Eric being the founder of this fantastic technology, you've got to get your hands on. Uh, That's it for us for this time on Off Leash with Eric Prince. I'm Mark Serrano. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm.